All right, my second video on fixing up this Jeep. If you watch my last video on disassembling most of the upper intake manifold down to the fuel rail and the injectors, I'm still getting a pressure leak on the fuel delivery side. So that would be the fuel pressure regulator fuel pump, which in the Jeeps is one unit and it's inside the gas tank. So you can't replace the fuel pressure regulator by itself. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to do that. And the first thing I did was started the car and then disconnected the fuse for the fuel pump so that it relieves most of the pressure. Fuel pump fuse is right here, right next to this larger fuse. It's a 20 amp fuse. What I basically do is start the car, take a pair of pliers, pull that out till the motor stalls and then turn the key off. So after that, uh, we'll go underneath the car here. All right, so up underneath the car, that's the fuel filler tube there that's going up to the back of the car where the fuel cap is. So what we'll be doing is eliminating this guy right here, taking that band off. That'll give us access to the fuel tank then I'm going to siphon out all the remaining gasoline that's in the tank. Should just be a couple gallons, I hope. And I have a hand siphon, so I'm not going to video that because that's going to take a while. But uh, basically, there's a screw on the back side. You can just see the tip of it there. Loosen this hose clamp just like anything else. Pull it off. The uh, siphon that you use, uh, right inside of here, there's a flap. So just push the siphon down past that flap otherwise you won't get any any fuel out and then start pumping get rid of it and i'll be back when that's done all right so we before we can actually get this guy off this thing up inside there is about that deep and there's no give here and there's no give farther up so the only way to get enough slack on this thing to pull it out is to go ahead and lower the tank a little bit so we'll we're going to have to do that anyway. First thing you need to do is remove the skid plate for the transfer case up here. This guy right here. There are four bolts for that. One on this rail, one closer to the front, two over here, one of which is connected to the actual fuel tank skid plate. So this whole thing has to come out first. And then there are six more bolts along the fuel tank that you'll see. There's one there. There's uh, one just above the boot here that you can't see behind there. The one up front where the skid plate connects. And on the other side, there are three more over there. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of those. You'll notice the tank is on a jack, a hydraulic jack here, so it doesn't just fall down. And I can lower it, uh, you know, slowly if I need to. Those are 18 millimeter bolts uh, for all of these skid plate and the bolts holding in the fuel tank and the skid plate, which are one unit. You don't have separate bolts for the tank. It's all the same. Also, if you don't want to use a screwdriver on these bad boys here, these are four millimeter bolts um, that actually bind up the, uh, the bands here if you don't want to use a flathead screwdriver. It goes a little bit faster with a ratchet. All right, I got pretty much every bolt out. This is the bolt that connects the skid plate for the transfer case to the bottom of the fuel tank skid plate. As you can see, I sheared it off. Um, the thing wasn't going, but unfortunately, I guess technically I could have left that on and just dropped the skid plates together except that you can't get to this bolt with the skid plate arm in the way. It's impossible. I tried two different kinds of air ratchets and air hammers. I've got a stubby one as well as a full size one. None of them could get a good grip on that. And I was stripping the end of the bolt off. So lots of PB blaster on most of these. And uh, finally this is off. All right. The fuel filler is off, as you can see. Fuel tank's pretty loose, so it doesn't weigh that much. I think I only have a couple gallons in there. 
It's still resting on the jack, but uh, I'm gonna stick a siphon in there and get whatever else I can out. All right, gas tank is dropped. Um, unfortunately, fell off my jack and fell a little faster than I wanted it to. So I needed to disconnect the fuel pump electrical connection and the gas line because they were strained a little bit too much. Um, that's just a standard push connector. So if you look on the inlet there, there's blue. You squeeze those in and where's my camera lens? This part just slides off. Electro connector is just one of those standard uh, push pin, push the red pin kind of thing. And then up here, we've got the connections for the EVAP that I'll need to disconnect as well. Um, one that goes back to the fuel inlet. The other one over here that goes up to the front of the car to the actual purge valve. We'll disconnect both of those and then we'll slide this bad boy out from underneath the car. As you can see, it's uh, been farm capped. What you see there is a combination of sand and mouse shit. All right, back at it. Fuel tank is out, out of the garage because it smells like gas. Uh, a couple things to note. This is the fuel pump assembly. There's the lock ring there. So we're gonna replace that, not just take it off, but replace this completely. Um, this up here, it's called a rollover valve. It is not user serviceable. If this thing breaks, you have to buy an entirely new tank. Last night when I was under the car and we had about this angle, I pointed to this connector here and said this was the EVAP. I was actually incorrect. The EVAP is that connection up there. This one's part of the rollover valve that actually goes right to there. So the rollover valve is important. Uh, it does two things. When the car flips over, it has a stopper that closes so that fuel doesn't spill out the filler. Um, so it prevents that from happening. It also helps the tank uh, from creating vacuum or too much pressure as the engine's operating. So it's kind of a relief valve there. I uh, capped off the fuel valve with some uh, saran wrap there. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was this is what connects to the EVAP canister under the car. And this particular type of connector is a little tricky. So you see these tabs here and here. It slides off, but you've got to get these tabs up over this little ridge right there. And normally you could use the same type of tool that you use to remove the quick disconnects from the fuel line up under the hood. The problem is the ones that I have are big enough to get around this, but not deep enough to actually push those in. So to get that out, all you really have to do is take a tiny little screwdriver, pry that one up as you push away, and you'll it'll actually come up and then rest on top of that little detent there, and then do the same thing with the bottom one. And once you get both of those out of the way, the whole thing just pulls straight out, so we'll do that. Uh, the other problem, and this is very common on these rollover valves, this connector broke. This goes to the EVAP line, on the fuel filler neck and you can see that that broke clean off uh, if you read any of the forms especially for the jeeps this happens all the time i'm going to show you how to fix this with uh just some basic stuff we'll uh we'll get that epoxied up and get a actually a better connection on there so when we put this all back together it doesn't break off if this does break off you're going to get one of the uh check engine light codes for a small or a large leak in the EVAP system. So I'm going to vacuum this all up. I will not video that. And then I'll show you how to get that lock ring off and we'll take the pump out. All right, slight heck up with the lock ring. So I bought a lock ring tool from Rock Auto when I bought the lock ring. Yes, it's a total piece of junk. It was like $11, but I don't really have to use these very often. And the Mopar equivalent is $500, which is beyond ridiculous. So great tool, except for the fact that it's designed to go around the outside of lock rings like this. 
and clearly this isn't one of those. So the only place to get a connection is these right here. Uh, so I modified <laughs> as best I could so that these pieces fit into that like so. Uh, also found out that these are not exactly opposite from each other if you look top down. So these things are off center. Uh, so anyway, um, tried to put the half inch breaker bar in here. No luck. I sprayed the crap out of it with blaster, as you can see. And then ultimately he resorted to a screwdriver and a rubber mallet. So I put the screwdriver in there and banged until it came loose. Also a problem for this one, uh, you remember from the prior video, this thing was covered in sand and mouse poop. Uh, sand is down inside of here, all over. I actually found a piece of uh, what looked like desert rock. So I think someone took this off-roading at some point, and I think most of what was locking this up are little bits of gravel and sand that were still left in here that I couldn't get out. So good news is we're free. I'm going to take another blast at it with some air to get any remaining sediment and stuff from underneath here before I pull this pump out, and then we will lift that bad boy out of there. All right, lock rings off. Pulling the pump out. There is still some gasoline in here, as you can see, and some in the tank that I'll need to siphon out. The next step is to get that last bit of gasoline out of there, and then... Uh, I'll be giving this a deep clean. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, tank is drained, as you can see. So I tilted it up on its side there so I could get to it. Next thing I'm gonna be doing is cleaning the tank. Uh, I may not have to do this. It may as well while you've got it open. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, so you can see here, I won't read all the directions, but you basically put in two gallons of water put in the cleaning fluid, rinse it around, dry it out, fill the tank, and go. Uh, you can get this at Rock Auto as well. I think this was like $11, maybe five bucks. I can't even remember, but uh, we'll be doing that. I won't film that. Again, you can read the instructions for yourself. I don't need to show you how to add water to a tank and rinse. So when we get back, we'll be ready to put in the new pump. So, what we have here, and you probably can't tell, but that tiny little hole actually goes into a common area that connects all of these together. So there's nothing special about this, uh, and frankly, if you look at a number of other posts, no one's sure why Chrysler didn't just make it maybe part of this tube with a T instead of going through the trouble of making this brittle connector. But here you can see my torn glove and the part that broke off. So what we're going to do is take this little guy called a roll pin, so it's hollow. It is 13 64ths in diameter, which is just bigger than this hole here. So you notice it can't go in there. So what we're going to do is take a 13 64ths drill bit, I set it to a depth of about half of the length of that pin, which is about half of an inch. The pin's an inch. So we're gonna drill very carefully into there at that depth, which will give it a backstop so that this thing doesn't push all the way through and end up inside of here. So we're gonna drill half inch into there, and then similarly half inch into here to create a tighter connection point and then we'll basically just epoxy these two parts together. So, pretty easy, and I'll be back with the finished product. Here is the finished product. The important thing is, we can still see all the way through into the main area there. We didn't clog it up with epoxy or anything. Uh, if I said 17 64ths for the size of that bit, Please ignore me, you get what you pay for with free YouTube videos. It's 13 64ths. 
The other thing to be really careful of when you're drilling, uh, that bit is going to want to catch on this really soft plastic and you'll end up causing yourself more trouble than it's worth. So be really careful drilling, um, and especially on this piece, I ended up having to clamp it to my bench, uh, otherwise the bit kept wanting to grab onto those broken bits right there and just twist the whole thing, and I uh, didn't want to risk that. So I put another uh, roll pin inside of here that was a little bit smaller so that I could put some pressure on this without cracking it, clamped it down to my bench, and then drilled it that way. So at this point, we are all good. I left the cover on here just to prevent any crap from getting down in there before we put the connectors back on. And uh, we're ready to get it back into the skid plate and mount it back up under the Jeep. That'll be our next step. Epoxy's good on the EVAP here. So you can see the finished product all sealed up. It's tight. So the next thing to do is flip that skid plate over, get the tank set back in it, and then mount it up. Pro tip, when you remove the old fuel pump, don't forget to take this retaining bracket off, otherwise the new connector on the new fuel pump has nothing to connect to. Uh, really glad that I realized that before I got this all assembled because my trash comes tomorrow and this guy would be a goner. So. Take that off, uh, basically just put a screw, tiny screwdriver or something in there to pry these up over this tiny lip, a little barb, slide it off, slide it back onto the new pump. Okay, I lied. Again, what you get for free YouTube advice. I forgot about this broken bolt from the skid plate. Uh, these bolts are 15, 30 seconds in diameter, so ideally what you want to do is drill it out with something just underneath that size. Unfortunately, my half-inch chuck drill is on the fritz, so the biggest I can do is a 3 8 but uh, we'll see how it goes. So that bolt was not coming out of there, so I improvised and ended up just tapping it with an M8-125 tap, so I can use this guy. And since all this is doing is holding the one arm of the transfer skate transfer case skid plate to uh, the underside of this skid plate it doesn't need to be quite as load bearing as some of these other ones I uh, did need to use a washer because the head of this is too small it'll go right through the mounting hole for the skid plate so from under the car what I did was put the front of this on a jack it's not that heavy but just to make it a little bit easier and then I got these front two bolts here just loosely put in to hold it in place for me so that back here I can reconnect all the wires and tubes without a whole lot of slack and then just lift this end up and then put the bolts in in the middle it makes it a little bit easier to do when it's down on the ground especially when it's up on a jack stand like this the tension on these cables go into the fuel pumps pretty pretty strong so I wanted to make sure I didn't uh, make any more messes for myself. Next thing is to put a jack under the other end. What you want to do is get the filler neck and these other mechanicals above the drive shaft and the rear axle so you can connect all this stuff again without putting too much strain on it. So, minor hiccup. For some reason the corner of the fuel tank is hitting where this guy comes in the bolt stuck out just barely of course you can't see it um, I backed it out just about that much to see if we can get around it I'm not sure why when I took the tank out it didn't do that um, anyway this bolt here is a uh, 21 millimeter it came out with not too much effort now I'll make sure I can Lift this thing the rest of the way up in place. All right, that did the trick. You can see if it would focus how much that was stopping that from getting up in there. So it's up, bolts back in place, good to go. I'm gonna make sure I attach some of these over here. 
The other thing to be careful of on the other side, just as you're lifting, do it a little bit at a time. Make sure all your cables are good. Nothing's getting pinched. The last thing you want to do is pinch and break one of these fuel lines or EVAP cables because they're not cheap to replace and they're uh, kind of brittle. All right, tanks back in. These are what the connectors should look like. This guy right here was our broken EVAP connector. Canister connection's okay. Remember, as you're lifting the tank, to connect the fuel filler line before you get it all the way in place. Remember what a pain in the butt it was to take that off. Need to tighten those back down. Um, again, those are seven millimeter or uh, flathead screwdriver, right? Whatever your preference is. The last thing I wanted to show you real quick was a slight design flaw in the e-brake cable. So this Jeep has a two and a half inch lift in it. And when you lift it, as anybody has done that, when you replace the springs, you gotta drop the axles pretty low and usually end up having to disconnect the e-brake. Uh, the problem is when it's articulating, this is the EVAP cable. It is typically connected directly to the fuel filler line here with zip ties from the factory, which means it has a lot of, I can't even reach it, it has a lot of stress on it, which is one of the reasons why this thing is breaking all the time is because this thing is constantly being pulled down. Secondly, if you don't have these things tied up out of the way and your wheels articulate, these e-brake cables will pull down and you can see it's got a bow in it on purpose. That's not a brake, but that's not enough to keep this thing from getting in its way. So I ended up taking this and extending it a little bit just to keep it up on a hanger. This one, whoever did the original lift kit didn't even bother taking this one off. So it's got some uh, wear and tear on it, but I'm gonna leave it. Um, I don't think this one will be going off-roading with that much articulation. But uh, the other thing you can do is you could zip tie this together to keep it there a little bit better. Um, or you could zip tie this maybe up higher. I've seen some people relocate this entire bracket up above, um, which puts stress on it the opposite direction. As you can see, there's a pretty high clearance to get up above those cables compared to where it is. So I'm gonna leave it here, but wanted to point that out. Uh, I just went ahead and snapped the original zip ties off of here and I'm gonna leave it that way. Last thing to do is add gas to the tank. Um, having a big tank like the one I just showed you is uh, a huge benefit because you want to get, ideally, an entire tank full. That's going to be relatively impossible with a 25-gallon tank, but I put about 10 in there, which is roughly halfway. Next thing we'll do is reconnect the negative battery terminal, and then I'm going to run the fuel pump to prime it before I start the car. So you can prime the pump one of two ways. You can put the key in the on position and cycle it off. Wait about 10 seconds, key on and cycle off. I've got this little contraption I built, which you've probably seen in my other video, where I can uh, basically plug that right into the fuse and uh, put this on the terminal and we can watch the, uh, the pressure build, assuming this thing runs. From here, I basically ran the fuel pump until I got about 50 PSI in it. Then I got back in the car and started it. I fast forwarded through all this to save you the misery of watching the pump build pressure. 